Hello, everyone. My name is Irene Gomez, and I am a doctoral student in the Counseling Education and Supervision Program here at the Chicago School Online Campus. I'm a licensed therapist in the state of Maryland, and today I have the privilege of speaking with Dr. Enzer, who is an assistant professor here in the Clinical Mental Health Counseling Department at the Chicago School. Hello, Dr. Enzer. Hello, Irene. It's good to see you. It's good to see you, too. Now, I'm going to ask you 10 questions. We're going to have a little discussion today. Um, I just want you to relax, and I hope you are able to enjoy yourself. I'm sure I will. I'm sure I will. Thank you. Okay, so the first question I have for you is, what is the first thing you notice when you meet someone? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I would have to say the first thing I notice is their energy and what they're bringing into my space. And probably to go along with that, I also notice how I am feeling in their presence. So okay. I think those are things that I, I really take note of. Yes. So the energy someone brings kind of dictates oh, yeah. how mm -hmm. things will go. Yes. Okay. Okay. And the second question I have for you, okay. what is one thing that the group would be surprised to learn about you? Irene, and I don't say this in any bragging way, but I am a fantastic trumpet player. Okay. <laughs> yes, I am. Um, when I was in high school and college, I played throughout those times. Uh, back in high school, I was the I was awarded first chair in my county in South Carolina, and that was a real achievement for me. And I love music, and I I love playing the trumpet, and that's something that I do even now. I do quite regularly, and I thoroughly enjoy it. Yeah. That's amazing! Wow, that's definitely something I would have never guessed. Funny enough, I play the clarinet. And so I played ah, okay. in high school and throughout college as well. And I music is a really big thing for me too. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. And my my wife, of course, she was a uh, percussionist in her heyday and uh, she really liked that. So we we both love music and it just, I don't know, it's something that um, kind of soothes my soul, soothes my soul. Yeah, definitely. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. My pleasure. So where is the most beautiful place you have ever visited? Oh, my goodness. Um, wow, what a question. Because prior to COVID, uh, she and I really traveled a lot. But I will say since COVID, um, our traveling experiences have, I guess, diminished. Well, our desire to travel has diminished um, a bit because of what's going on you know, in the, in the world today. But anywhere tropical, I, one of my favorite places is Turks and Caicos. Oh, uh, yeah, because you can actually the, the water is so blue. It's so, you know, crystal um, blue and so beautiful and um, clear. And uh, yeah, I love Turks and Caicos. When we were traveling, Irene, we, we would go there, um, try to go there twice a year, twice a year. It's amazing. But anywhere in the Caribbean, um, uh, she and I have also been to Hawaii. We've enjoyed that. Um, we've been to a, a lot of great places. Um, so I, it's hard to to pick one. Um, but yeah, we've uh, we've had our experiences with travel. Top three then. Top yeah. three. Okay, so it would be Turks and Caicos. It would probably be um, London. Ooh. And, uh, yeah, and Australia. Oh. Yeah. And one of the best things about travel, and I'm sure you'll agree with me, is the the experiences of new cultures, right? New people, new languages, food, things like that. It really makes for a very robust, you know, traveling experience. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Wow. Especially the food, Irene. I'm a big foodie. So oh, especially the food. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, I I I would love to travel to Australia. That's on my list. That's on my list. You're going to love it. And I really hope that comes to fruition for you because we had a great time. Great time. I'm putting it out there. I'm, I'm going to make sure it happens sometime in my lifetime. <laughs> okay. What is the most valuable piece of advice you've ever received and where did it come from? It's a great question too. Um, it's hard to pinpoint just one, Irene. Um, Probably some of those foundational lessons that I um, 
that were provided to me from my mother and father, you know, be kind, um, be considerate, be respectful, um, you know, refrain from judgment, give generously, help where you can. Those foundational lessons that really made me the person that I am today. Um, they may sound simple, but they mean really big things and carry a lot of weight. And um, I'm grateful um, to have learned those lessons from two of the best people in the world. And of course I'm biased, but, um, <laughs> but I can own that. I own that. So. Yeah. And those are skills that we need in our profession. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. So you mentioned your two favorite people. Mm -hmm. So who is your hero or your shiro? Oh my goodness. Oh, these are tough questions. Um, let's <laughs> see. The three biggest influences in my life would no doubt be my wife, Carrie, my mother, and my father. And from them, I have learned so much. They have enriched my life immeasurably, each in their own way. Um, the way they carry themselves in the world, um, the way they interact with people, the way they interact with me. You know, they're all generous of spirit, generous of heart. And, you know, I am so indebted to have people like that in my everyday life. And so, yeah, I couldn't pick just one hero. I've got three. And that's Carrie. That's my partner. That's uh, my mom and my dad. So just, just the way I, I see you, I saw you smile and like the way you speak about them, I can see like how much of an impact they are for you in your life. For me, family is everything. It's mm -hmm. everything. Anything, yeah. everything. It's like the, it's like the nucleus, like of my life, and everything else in my life kind of revolves around that. So, yeah. thank you so much for sharing that. So, kind of going back to our field. Okay. Who do you see the greatest need for advocacy in our field today? I know there's many. There's many. There's much of a need for advocacy. But what What are some yeah. avenues? Irene, I would probably say the LGBTQIA population because 10 years ago, it seemed like so much progress was being made in that area. And in the last two or three years or four years, it, it seems like there's been tremendous regression. We've seen a lot of hate and a lot of stripping away of, of rights and dignity of people and particularly this group. and when I think about it, it makes me angry. It makes me sad as well, because I, I want to get back to the place we were currently at or previously at. And sometimes I'll, you know, talk to my wife about it and say, you know, how did we arrive at this place? How did we get here? Um, you know, I'd like to see things get back on track for this community. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely a community that needs a lot of advocacy support. and support. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Again, thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. Well, that's a great question. That's a very important question as well. Very important. Mm -hmm. Advocacy is such a big part of what we do, although it might not be obvious when when people hear the term therapist or counseling educator yeah. or supervisors, but it is such an integral part of yeah. everything that we do because it's how we support our clients. That's it. That's it. And Irene, I had a um, a student a couple of terms ago who said, Dr. Enzor, you know, how do you advocate for others? And my response was loudly and strongly. <laughs> That's how I advocate. Um, but it was a good question. But I would love to see things get back, um, get back on track um, for that community. Absolutely. Yeah. And whatever I can do to help, I'm I'm going to do just that. Yes, yes. As we all need to do, honestly. And we all continue to do, and we will continue fighting the fight. Yeah. Fight the good fight, right? Mm hmm So on a little lighter note, mm -hmm. what is your favorite holiday to observe? Oh, my goodness. Um, oh, without a doubt, Christmas. I mean, <laughs> I, we we adore Christmas. We love Christmas. We go all out. We put, uh, we have... Um, we have a large house here at the beach and we have Christmas trees placed in every room. Um, we have lights, decoration, wreaths, you name it. Um, and actually we start very early, Irene. 
Carrie and I, we start like the day after Halloween, not after Thanksgiving. We start after Halloween. Um, and it's just the, it's the warmth of the season. It's the, it's the warmth of family and good friends and good food. And it's just a, a great time. You know, the, the only downside to Christmas is that it doesn't last as long as I want it to. Yeah. You know, it doesn't seem to to last, but I always try and do my best to, you know, have that, keep that warmth in my heart year round, you know, for others, for myself, for what I do in my profession and with my students. So that's what my, my goal is there. But yeah, we love Christmas. We love Christmas. I, I am on the same boat as you in my family with my parents, the day, November 1st, <laughs> we, we get started. <laughs> on, right. It's on, it's on. Yeah. And I read one of the uh, things that is a tradition in our family is that we all show up in some of the tackiest uh, Christmas sweaters you've ever seen. Oh, okay. But I love my tacky Christmas sweaters and <laughs> I'm never going to stop wearing them because I it's just a, another reminder of the joy of the of the season. Yeah, I, I love the ugly Christmas sweaters. They're my favorite. Oh, one of my favorite <laughs> <laughs> OK, so if you could meet anyone in the world, who would you like to meet? It could be current or an individual who's no longer present in the world? Wow, okay, that's an interesting question. Um, Three people. Well, my first would be Jesus. Okay. I want to talk to Jesus. I have some big questions to ask that I think only he could answer, so Jesus. Um, My second would be um, Queen Elizabeth. The second who recently passed away, I think, was it last mm -hmm. year or the year before? Yeah, she's yeah. So much history unfold. You know, she was um she was Britain's um longest reigning monarch, I think over 70 years, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd love to have a chat with her. And third, um Taylor Swift. Oh, okay. Swift, because I'm my wife is a big fan of Taylor Swift, and um she kind of got me hooked, Irene on Taylor Swift. And I've been very impressed with this tour that she's on and the contributions that she herself has made to certain communities with the food banks and, and things like that. So I would like to just, you know, meet her. Okay. Well, those are like three distinct individuals. I honestly, uh -huh. oh, I like that. Yeah. Jesus, Queen Elizabeth and Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> I like so, yeah, quite a grouping right can you imagine <laughs> what the conversation would turn into but yeah yeah I, I would like to chat with those three people I would okay and I like that okay and so since you mentioned that you have a big um passion for music mm -hmm. what is your favorite song and why oh my gosh you mean song of all favorite song of all time wow um that's a big one um Ooh. Hmm. Irene, it really would depend on the day and the mood I'm in. Okay. Right? It would depend on the day and on the mood. Um, because I, you know, I like different kinds of music. Um, you know, I love easy listening, I love jazz, country, classical, pop. I love it all. Um so what about wow, today? Like today, What's that? Right now. today, right oh, now. today. What would your um, song? <laughs> you know what? I think it's uh, what's that song? I think it's sung by Pharrell. Get happy. Uh, is that right? Get happy, get happy. Is it like because I'm happy? It's yeah, that's it. That's it. That's yeah. it. That's the song. You are not going to get me to sing. I'm not going to sing on this video. <laughs> I'll let you do that. But I, but yes, I would. I uh, think that would be an appropriate fit for today because, um, you know, you and I were speaking before the recording, and uh, you've been in my class, and to see you so enthusiastic and smiling and happy about the work that you're doing and where you're at in your program makes me very happy for you, and happy as a as a professor as well. So get happy. Yeah, that's my song for today because of you. So. <laughs> you <laughs> well you you got me to sing I can't sing so I'm I hope that didn't sound too bad me, you, did, you did better than I would so <laughs> you have at it have at it <laughs> <laughs> okay okay I I have the same kind of 
mentality when it comes to picking my favorite song. It really depends on the day and how I'm feeling as well. So uh, if I'm yeah. feeling, yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, I was going to say, I hear you, I hear you when you were like trying to decide. Yeah. Uh, because uh, it really just depends on where I'm at in my life, what day and what's going on around me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the very last question I have for you is what is or what was one of the biggest challenges you have had to overcome and what what was it like overcoming that for you that's a great question um well when I was much younger I was diagnosed with uh, GAD generalized anxiety disorder and I would say that that pretty much has been a um it's been a it's been a struggle at times more so than others and learning how to navigate that, knowing my triggers and, you know, what I could do when I found myself really gripped by, you know, anxiety or worry. Um, it's been, I'll say it's been a struggle. It really has in different spaces in my life. Um, but I have a, a wonderful, you know, self-care plan as to, you know, how to respond, um, you know, when I, when I encounter one of those, you know, episodes and, uh, but yeah, but thankfully, like I said, I have a, a wonderful spouse and a beautiful family who lifts me up when they see me struggling a bit. And I'm thankful for that. So, yeah. Yeah, you have, it sounds like a wonderful support system. And then you have a set of tools to use when you need it. Yeah. And I read, um, I'm not sure if you heard this, but my dog just barked or our dog just barked. And um, they actually help keep me focused and calm as well we're big animal people here and we have two dogs and uh, in fact I'll even introduce you to someone very special and this is Sadie Sadie say hello to Irene hi Sadie hi, Irene nice to meet you right and uh yeah she loves the camera can't you tell she loves the camera I, I can tell <laughs> and uh, it's, right and it's wonderful to have uh you know, pets, dogs around because they, they infuse your life with, or help infuse your life with a lot of joy. And uh, they've sort of become the kind of the centerpieces, you know, of our, of our life in, in many ways. And we're, uh, we're fortunate to have them. We are. I have a German Shepherd Husky mix, so I can't exactly lift her. Like you can lift Sadie up, oh. <laughs> no. but she thinks that she's as small as Sadie is. So she yeah. has no problem well, jumping on me. <laughs> Well, see, that's funny, Irene, because our two little ones, they've got, I think they think that they're German Shepherds because they act tough and they walk tough and they, they do lots of things tough. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, love our dogs, though. love our dogs. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. And before Absolutely. we close up for today, I just want to ask you, like, how was this experience like for you being interviewed, not knowing the questions ahead of time? <laughs> <laughs> it was, that's a great question. It was a lovely experience from beginning to end. And I'm thankful that I was paired with you uh, because you helped make this a very positive, uh, joyful experience. And uh, so thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you again. It was my honor and privilege to be able to interview today, interview you today and just speak to you and get to know you a little bit better. Absolutely. And I certainly hope that our paths cross again in the future. I do. I hope so. So thank you so much. Thank you, Irene. You take care, okay? You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.